Hello, my name is Anshul Fernando, and I'm going to be talking about the various arachnids that I've encountered in my life. Some of these are, are pets of mine that have passed on, others I've collected in the wild. What you see here in this drawer are some of the largest specimens that I've encountered. This one here is Theraphosa blondi. It is one of the world's largest spiders. When you compare it to the side, uh, when you compare it beside my hand, it's huge. Now this one here was a, a pet here in Calgary, and she was bred each and every year. And when she produces an egg sac, thousands of babies are produced. And she produces lots of those uh, babies, not because she expects every one of them to survive, but rather if uh, the babies run out of food, they would cannibalize each other. This one here is another Goliath female, and this one passed on while it was molting. She had been fed way too many mice, and as a result, the amount of calcium that was depleted prevented her from being able to molt properly, and that's why her legs look the way they do. And this is a male Goliath. You can see there's a substantial difference between the male and the female. These Goliaths, they originate uh, in South America, particularly Guyana and Peru. This one here is a little cobalt blue tarantula. And I've mounted these scorpions um, looking like they're ready to attack just for the aesthetic appeal. And this is the standard way of mounting these scorpions right up here. Giant forest scorpion from Thailand. This one here is the traditional emperor scorpion. Now, a number of years ago, my eldest son, he bought this centipede for me live at a reptile show because he knew that I was terrified of centipedes. And in order for me to get over my fear, he's like, here, Dad, just uh, look after this and you'll get over your fear. Now, this little scorpion here is a desert hairy, and she was uh, the pet of my youngest daughter, and my youngest daughter, she uh, named it Monkey. So when it passed on, I've preserved it in time. I'll pull out another drawer here and show you just some of the other arachnids that I've um, acquired in my travels, and some of them also have been pets. Now, if you look at this one, I'll shine the flashlight on the male here, you'll notice that it's got a purplish sheen on the legs. That actually tells you that it's a, a male, and it's got the tibial hooks at the front of its pedipalps. This is Pampobethus antinus, coming out of Peru, and right at the top here is the corresponding female. Now, with these uh, various arachnids, uh, some of them are members that I've actually found in my home uh, when I've been traveling. So, for example, these are house spiders that came into the into my vicinity in Sri Lanka and this one here had an egg sac so I caught that and preserved it just so that you would be able to see the the sheer size of these house spiders. This centipede here jumped at my face when I was in Sri Lanka, this green one, so when it was on my face uh, near my ear, I smacked it down and now it's in my collection. This little fellow right here is the world's deadliest scorpion called the Death Stalker. I caught that with my bare hands uh, when I was eight years old and uh, my mom was extremely upset that I had uh, lied to her trying to tell her that I was catching butterflies when in fact I was out there hunting scorpions and I didn't know that it was the deadliest. Uh, what I've come to learn is that this little scorpion has enough venom in one little tiny sting to kill five adults in 15 minutes. I definitely am very lucky to be alive because that little scorpion had struck at me and hit my fingernail and didn't go in so I'm very very fortunate that I didn't get stung by that. Now, this Scolopendra centipede here is one that, uh, very similar one that I actually got envenomated by when I was eight years old on a trip to Sri Lanka. And this was uh, basking on my right leg when I was asleep. And my, uh, my, ha my leg was getting itchy, so I scratched it. And this uh, centipede, not this exact one, but one this size, sunk its fangs into my thigh and I was uh, envenomated and it, I, it created a significant reaction in me and I ended up having to seek medical attention 
back at a time when there were no telephones and no paramedics and no 911 and no electricity. So I'm very fortunate to be alive. This here is a orb weaver spider that comes out of Thailand. It's a Nephila species. And uh, over here, right beside it, is a pink toe. Uh, sorry, that's a green bottle blue tarantula coming out of Venezuela. And here is a Sri Lankan ornamental Pocillotheria fasciata. That was a pet of ours. We had it alive for some time, and when it passed on, I preserved it. So this is just to give you a, a small idea of the sorts of creatures that I've uh, encountered or even has had as pets. The only creature in this drawer here that is actually not an arachnid is this tiny little marine shrimp. I put that in there because I do school presentations and when I teach the kids about the various uh, arthropods that are around, it's important to understand that these guys are related to each other. And so if we think it's gross and disgusting to eat uh, arachnids, well, they are closely related to um, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, and crabs. And if it's, if it's yummy to eat those creatures, well, I can tell you that it's actually pretty tasty to eat these guys as well. But I'm not interested in eating them. I'm more interested in studying them and learning about them. This is a scorpion that I actually caught in, in uh, Sri Lanka. It's a very unique... Uh, unique species. I don't actually have the scientific name for that uh, right now. I will get it one day. And this is the uh, bird spider right up here. And that's from Papua New Guinea. And these guys uh, perch on branches and trees and as these small birds, finches and sparrows and, and such, they, uh, they fly by then these tarantulas jump on them and eat them. And right beside this is the vinegroon. Now this vinegroon comes from Thailand and it produces a vinegar solution in its abdomen that sprays out of its abdomen and this long, uh, this long object coming out of its abdomen is actually an aiming device where it points and then it shoots the 65% concentrated vinegar. Now just to give you a frame of reference, the vinegar that you buy in a grocery store is only 5% concentrated. This one here is 65%, so it actually can melt away uh, the flesh of creatures and really cause lots of, lots of problems. So here you have it. This is a small collection of some of the arachnids that I've acquired over, over the years, and I preserve them, and they serve a very unique educational aspect. If you like this video, please like it, and subscribe, and share it. Thank you for watching.